Welcome back, nerds and noobs, to Mace Blades Guides. Uh, today is day one of year two, so uh, happy one year anniversary or so. Um, but today we are going to get into electricity. We're going to get into different types of electricity. And um, we're going to get into the draws of the electricity. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, there's going to be three different types of um, electricity generation here. Okay, you're going to have your, uh, let's find the first one, let's find the first one, right here. Okay, so you're going to have your thermal generator. Okay, it requires, you know, a thermal generator drawings, one electric wire, you have to have your electrification grade of three and your electric and your engineering grade or skill of three. That is one style of uh, producing electricity. I'm not going to get into that one. I haven't even unlocked this one because it's just a not a very um, useful. I mean, you can use it if you if you find the you know the schematics and you want to unlock it. I mean, there's always shit to burn, and that's basically what this does. It, it burns things. Now you can put coal in there. Coal gives you at least, because I have not tested any further, I know it'll cap, it'll, it'll fill a bonfire with just one coal, it'll put at least 600 in there. A thermal generator, I think, takes up to 4,000. So, you know, and then it'll just sit there and burn and produce electricity by spinning this little pinwheel right here on top. It'll just produce electricity. Now, there's solar panels, which is a solar station, which I have set up. And then there's the fuel generator, which is, believe it or not, pretty fuel efficient with the amount of electricity it draws. The only problem, or, or uh, creates, the only problem is, is that you have to have a uh, consistent supply of fuel to do it. All right. Now, once you get all of three, three, you know, or one of them, or whatever one you want, in order to even access these three, you have to create the battery cart. That's right here. Now, the battery cart is this it's this structure right here and when you create it it has no batteries in it it's just an empty cart there's nothing in it you are going to need the inverter which you can find in here generally you can find inverters here um you can find inverters up here as well in these two places you're almost guaranteed to find solar panels inverters crucibles this one here you're going to find fuel and oil you know there's you can find them quite often a lot of places but these are your two best spots really you know uh, that's where I got all my fuel uh, my solar panels from was those two spots and it didn't take me long to get my solar panel grid set up um, now uh, so the fuel generator which I will drive and show you in a minute um, obviously just burns fuel that's all you have to do is you have to keep it stocked with fuel and it will just produce electricity as long as it has fuel um, the solar panels, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven solar panels equipped with nine 300 watt solar panels, uh, individual panels. So that is my substation guide for there. Um, you know, and so when you set up your battery cart, it's going to I, I don't even know what it lists itself as the default but right here is the name of it up here on the top I have mine labeled the grid um, spelled all kind of nerd like and it shows you the available range now unfortunately I built mine inside so it's really hard to see your range this at this point but that's what that blue is everywhere you can connect electricity to um, as you get higher up you're gonna use like cooking stations and they have the electricity but you have to go to click on electricity select your grid and then click connect and you will connect to it. Refrigerators, same thing, electricity. Find your electricity, click, you know, s select that. Now, before you can even use the battery terminals, you have to find the batteries to put in there. I recommend the orange 200 amp ones. You can use whatever batteries you'd like, um, but the orange 200 amp ones are industrial batteries and they hold charges longer and you can fill them all up to 200 amp hours. Now, the solar panels. Once you build your solar grid and you put your panels to it, you click electricity, you connect to your grid, that will allow you to start charging your batteries. Um, the same is going to apply to your fuel generator. 
you will need to select electricity and you will need to um, connect it to your grid and same with the thermal the thermal generator you know you select that you open it up you select electricity and then you connect it to your grid um, the only reason I don't use the fuel generator or the or the thermal one is simply because I want as much automation as possible I don't want to spend a whole lot of time constantly stoking the fire or constantly putting fuel in in order to create electricity and when you got beautiful bright sunny days why not utilize the Sun and create your power that way okay with that being said Let's talk about usage. Let's talk about setting up light fixtures. Let's talk about, you know, a lot of different things that are going to impact your batteries, the rate at which they charge, how much battery life you have. As you can see here, these industrial batteries, 200 amp hours, the maximum is 200 amp hours. You know, I have quite a few here. You know, overnight I burnt some down, but you've just seen how that took a huge jump. That is my, you know, that is how much power I'm generating right now. You know, tw I just went from 60 something to 96.8. So I actually created like 30 amps in no time. You know, that battery's going to take like no time to charge. And that's good because I have, you know, the 11 out there and I have two solar panels out front. And, you know, it's it'll, it'll restock rather quick. I wish I could do two battery terminals and connect them that way just to have an unlimited supply. But you can't, so it is what it is. Now here is a machining table. This is an electric machining table. You know, you can see it uses 3,500 watts. Um, you got to connect it to your electricity. Now the 3,500 watts, what that means in amps or your amp storage is it, whenever I use that table to create anything, it doesn't matter what I use or what I make. I can make electric wire. I could make a pot. I could make, you know, a steel dagger. I can make a car repair kit or a water filter. It doesn't matter what I use or what I make, anytime I use it, it's going to use 3,500 3, watts, 3,500 watts. What does that convert to in batteries? That converts to 3.5 amps per usage. Okay, so yeah, it's not too bad, right? So it's only 3.5 amps per usage. Now we will talk about things that use a consistent draw. Now the refrigerator uses 100 watts. What does 100 watts equal in battery? 0.1, no big deal, right? The problem is it's consistently accessing the battery. So in order to run this, it needs to consistently pull 0.1 out of the battery. So I'm always going to have to compensate for 0.1 coming in my solar panels. Now you can see where the draw comes in. So overnight, you know, I will use 0.1 every tick, which I believe the ticks are in game time. It's two minutes. So every two minutes I will use 0.1. Or so, or maybe it's every hour. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Honestly, it might be every hour. Lights. Now, when you go to set up your fixtures, okay, you have different kinds of fixtures. You can have the wall lamp, which I have out here. I have my wall lamps for outside, and then you can have the chandelier, which is this guy, and it hangs right there, you know, on your ceilings. And I have those. Um, let me put that away. Now these use 30 watts, all right? So at 0.03 is what this uses per, you know, tick. And you set it up to your electricity, boom, that's done. But in order to power the lights, you can either power it, like walk up here and turn it on, you know, by itself, or you set it to a switch, you know, build in the switch. You come in your inventory here, there's your lights. It uses one glass, 10 wire, 10 or one ingot per wall lamp. And the ceiling is pretty much the same, is exactly the same actually. Um, and then your wall switch has to be mounted on a wall or a beam and it uses one plastic 10 wire, one electric component. All right. So, um, when you build your switch, you know, you put it in there or whatever, you have to go into it. Now you can name your switch. I have mine, this bottom one's outside front and the top one is inside bottom. So bottom floor, but it's inside. And when I access my switch, all my lights on the bottom come in and the reason being is because when you build your lights and you're right here you have to connect it to a switch all right you have to remember what your switches are and my, this one's inside bottom because it's bottom floor but inside and that's what that's connected to now you can connect it to any type of switch you want to you can name your switches any way you want to but that's just how it is walk up to it hit, you can either hit e to open it or just hit f and the f automatically selects it so that is it for switches and lights 
All right, you can have multiple switches, you know, etc. Now, in your water storage, which we touched on yesterday, your water storage, albeit constantly connected to the electricity, it does not constantly pump. So it's connected to your electricity, it's connected to your water source, you know, you can see your range, but when you go to the main interface, it does not, it's not always pumping. It'll pump up to 500 liters and then it'll shut off. So anytime you are without water, you have to come out here, start pumping, it uses 300 watts, 300 watts, which is 0.3 of a battery every time it produces water. So 440, it'll use 0.3 right now. When it goes up to 450, it'll use another 0.3 out of a battery. Okay, so that's how it works, every tick. So that has a different tick, a faster tick, but it produces water a lot quicker. Now, I will take a quick ride over to the my gas station, I call it, even though it is literally just an advanced oil refinery. And I will get right back to you. All right, and we are rolling up to our gas station now, I call it. And as we approach, you're going to see that I had some solar panels already set up. Uh, a moment though, I have to take out some haters. Okay, so here I have another battery station set up. I should have brought some more batteries. These ones are almost dead. All right, so I don't know how that one has a negative 84. That's, I've never seen that before. That's really weird. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is my oil rig right here, electricity, electricity bank. You know, um, down here is my fuel generator. So I go to electricity, I connect it to oil rig, you know, and then I, got, I just click start generating electricity when I want it to start producing electricity for here. I also have two solar panel generators. Um, one is a couple shy. I was having an issue trying to find some. So, I mean, obviously you can see by my home base, I used majority of my solar panels there. Uh, let's see if I have any fuel. I do not. Um, so that is where my electricity is set up. You can see I put a street sign oil rig. So if you put a street sign, you can literally, literally hover over it and it'll tell you what it is. Okay. It's so like this one here, solar panels, motors, and oil. Okay. That was before I realized that this is where you, I made my gas station. So you come here and you can see it uses 3000 Watts, which if we do our math, that's 3.0, you know, amps out of the battery. Um, in order to make plastic or rubber, we need oil. In order to make small bottle of fuel, we also need oil. In order to make a large bottle of fuel, we need three fuel. But in order to make a barreled fuel, we need 10 of these babies. Now, the best part about the barreled fuel is it literally takes two seconds to make. So you just literally click make. It's done in two seconds and you get yourself a barrel of fuel. Now what you want to do is make 10 more. So you just come over here and you get making 10 more. And then I'm just going to take this fuel because I don't need it in my truck. I'm going to put it in here, click start generating electricity, and it's just going to pump up. Hey, look, it's back to zero. Um, but you can see it pulled from that battery and it must have pulled the negative amount from that battery, which is completely bizarre I've never seen that but so it'll start generating power now in there um, power generation is 1000 watts or 1.0 so it should go up 1.0 I think it charges the first battery in the stack first it always does that so but that is it for electricity I could do thermal I could set up a thermal rig and you know have that generate too because let's face it sticks are a very very common thing logs are very common coal is i mean it's not hard to find coal it's you can literally find it anywhere you know and just burn that and it'll just keep burning and burning until it runs out of time but um you know again i like to go for automation which is why i'm trying to switch over to solar you know and why not so but that is it i hope you guys learned something i hope you guys uh enjoy the game and i hope you guys get wrecked nerds all right, peace.